please forgive my terrible attempt at pronunciation. Before we start this video, a large thank you to Janghu, Primo, Dored, Matthew, Wizard Elmo, Juan, and Marcus for their support on Patreon. And a special thank you to Mike Harden Games for their immense support to this channel this month on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today's goal is to sh make it so we shoot an arrow or a projectile. It sticks into the environment. So right now if we go to the wall and we shoot this arrow, it's probably going to fly off it and just go into oblivion. So, yep, that is exactly what it does. So we want to make it so when we shoot the arrow, it's going to stick into the wall on the angle that we shoot it at. And we also want to fix a couple bugs in this video, particularly with how we uh, aim um, and how we are able to walk faster when we have an arrow notched. So if we go into the arrow uh, live model prefab here. Let's open up the ranged projectile damage collider script. Let's start with making a function, or sorry, an if statement. We're going to say if uh, has already penetrated a surface is not true. And our penetrated projectile equals null, then we want to do some logic. And the reason we're checking for both of these is because we don't want to uh, accidentally generate two um, projectile models that are stuck into a wall. We want one for every arrow that is shot. So let's start by making a variable of type vector3. We're going to call that contact point. And we're going to try to figure out uh, where on the collider this hits. And we're going to do that by saying this contact point is equal to collision, referencing the collider that we strike, dot game object dot get component dot co or get component collider and then we're going to open up these brackets and say dot closest point on bounds and all that does to my knowledge is it gives us a place where this collider is striking that collider on its uh its collision box and we're going to pass this transformed opposition now right below that or above that rather sorry first we should say uh has already penetrated a surface is equal to true and then below that, we're going to make a reference to our game object, um, the penetrated arrow model. So let's say game objects, let's call this uh, penetrated arrow is equal to instantiate. And this is where we now use our ammo item reference. We're going to say ammo item dot penetrated model. And then we're going to put that at the contact point and we're going to make the rotation just zero. So it'll be quaternion dot Euler zero, zero, zero. Like so. Okay, that looks good. And now right below that, we want to actually make sure we're filling in the variable of penetrated projectile. So we're gonna say penetrated projectile is equal to the penetrated arrow we just instantiated. Okay, that looks good. Now let's actually make the rotation correct. So we're gonna say penetrated arrow dot transform dot parent is equal to the collision dot transform. This just makes it so it's actually parent on the object. So the object is moving around when you strike it, the arrow will move with it. And then we're going to say penetrated arrow dot transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot look rotation. And we're just going to say game object dot transform dot forward. And that should be fine. Now let's do one more thing before we leave here though. We want to actually destroy the live model after we've struck it into something. Uh, we don't want it to be just floating around with the damage collider active. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we'll simply say um, destroy and we'll pass the transform.root.gameObject. Now if you want to, you can add a destroy after time script to your live arrows so that they're soaring through the air forever. They will just delete after X seconds. I'm not going to do that because it will eventually hit something in the final product because we'll have the level bound set up and stuff. But if you wanna do that, go for it. Um, now if we go into the game and test this, it should be fine in theory. So I'm just going to go and draw back the arrow now and aim at this wall, and it should stick in. And yes, it does. Excellent. That looks really good. All right, cool. So we do have one small problem. I'm going to show you not the problem, but just testing this. Okay, it's fine. If we stick into our character over here, um, let me explain this before I get closer. Our character has one damaged collider, which is a capsule collider resting on the main game object. But this capsule collider is not parented under any of the limbs of the character. Uh, the problem herein lies in two ways. One, we don't have accurate damage detection for arrows and projectiles because they can whiz by the smaller parts and not hit them. And two, this happens. You can see, like right now, that's that struck the capsule collider, which is fine. But notice how it doesn't follow the player when he animates. It just sits there. That's not good. And I'll show you in scene view why this happens. Um, so if we click on the enemy here now, or the enemies rather, if I find the one that this is... Double, I think it's this one here. Yeah, you can see. So it's it's in the collider, but the collider does not follow the model, so it stays upright. Um, now the the remedy for this is limb based damage detection, as opposed to one collider on the main character. This is my project, Nephilim. As you can see, if I draw back the bow here now and I shoot this gentleman in the chest, 
If I go over through him, you can see as he's moving in his idle animation, the arrow actually moves with him. Uh, this is because I have damage colliders on each of the limbs. Um, now, if I go into him, you can actually see it here. There's the main collider, which is for the detection of uh, locomotion. But then you can see these tiny little colliders around his arms, his forearms, his legs, uh, his thighs, his head, his torso, etc., etc. Um, when the arrow shoots one of these colliders, it parents under it. So when the model is actually animating, the arrow will move with the model's animation. It looks a lot more natural. And if this guy were to fall down on the floor and die, uh, the arrow would fall down with him. So it looks a lot nicer. I also have a layer set up here, so I can only stick the arrow into um, an, a character or an environment, which is nice too. And I can add that in the future if you guys wish. But we're going to do damageable, um, limp, damage based limb systems 100%. That's going to happen. Um, I put up a poll. If you want to see it in the next video, go vote. If not, we're going to do item based actions in the next video. Uh, but it is kind of crucial to the archery system. Now, another bug is if I aim, as you can see, if I aim and let go, the uh, the camera's rotations don't really stop. They're never reset. And also if I draw an arrow and I hold the sideways movement, I'm able to kind of like moonwalk really fast. We don't want that either. So what we're going to do um, is we're just going to basically fix the camera bug first and then the movement bug. So here, uh, if I'm holding the LB, LB input, I let go of it rather. If we're aiming, we're going to do some logic. So if I hold LB and let go and we are aiming, we want to reset our camera's rotations because we're no longer aiming. We said the aim camera's rotation specifically, my bad. So let's make a public function on the camera handler script. We're going to call this reset uh, aim cam rotations. And this is very simple one line of code. The only thing we're doing differently in the aim camera is removing our actual camera object. So what we're going to do, or rotating it rather, is we're going to say camera transform, camera transform being the transform of our camera object, uh, dot rotation is equal to quaternion Euler 0, 0, 0, and that's it. It should be fine now. Let's go call that functionality on the input handler, and then we should be good to go. So right here, I'm just going to say camera handler dot reset aim camera rotations, and we're fine. Actually, no, we're not. I just thought about that. It has to be local rotation, uh, not rotation. So come back here. Make sure you change this to local rotation. Otherwise, it'll change the rotation of the game object it's housed uh, under. Now, if I go back in the game and I aim, as you can see, aiming in and out, it resets the camera perfectly. Everything is where it should be. That looks good. So the next problem is the moonwalking. That is a very simple fix too. It's just also a, um, a single function or uh, a couple lines of code. Right now, we're able to walk really fast in one direction. I made the mistake here of dividing by two, thinking that it would uh, solve the movement for up and down. There's a simpler solution. We can come here after we have calculated the move amount. We can simply say right under it. Uh, if our move amount is greater than 0.5f, we can simply say the move amount is equal to 0.5f. And this is under the if statement if the player manager is holding an arrow. So this will only be true if we have an arrow notched, which is what we desire. Now, if I go back into the game and I hit the play button right now, I'm just going to make sure we've not botched anything. We can run around find. So... Yeah, we're able to run around and that's say okay Now, if I notch the arrow, I'm only able to walk. And that is perfect. So that looks great. If you guys are on your holiday break, I hope you are enjoying your holidays. Have a great holidays. And if you made it this far, be sure to drop a like and leave a comment. It genuinely helps out my series so much. It does something to the algorithm so people who would not normally see this video get a chance to see it. And if you're feeling like a super champion, check out my Patreon below. Now, as I was stating earlier, um, if you want to see limb-based damage collision in the next video, go to my Discord and vote on the poll. If you'd prefer to see item-based actions, which I discussed in the last video, you can vote for that too. I'm going to do both of them regardless. Apologies if the setup sounds a bit different. I'm out visiting family. I had to bring all my equipment out. So I will see you guys in the next video, and I'll probably be back in my office by then.